Okay, our, our second uh, presenter will be Ellie Hernandez. Uh, Ellie is currently a postdoctoral fellow at Missouri University of Science and Technology. Uh, he received his PhD degree in 2018, and his dissertation focused on load rating of bridges through load testing. And uh, his two primary research areas of interest include evaluation of existing bridges through load testing and strengthening of bridges with composite materials. Thank you for the introduction. Good morning, everyone. Today I'm going to talk about experimental dynamic low allowance of uh, pre-stressed concrete bridge. Throughout the presentation, um, I will provide, provide some details about the, um, the testing equipment we, uh, we use, the sensors we install in the field, also the test procedures that we follow to obtain the impact factor or dynamic load allowance of this bridge, and then compare these experimental results with analytical values provided by three different codes. At the end, I will provide some uh, concluding remarks. As many of you lo know, uh, low rating is the uh, evaluation that is conducted on a bridge to obtain the maximum life load carry capacity or the maximum life load that a bridge structure can withstand without undergoing any collapse or damage. This is a major basis in prioritizing maintenance operations and also making decisions regarding life load uh, that can be uh, passed uh, across a bridge without causing any uh, damage. Traditionally, there are two methods, analytical calculations and also load testing. Some of the parameters that can be obtained in the field is the impact factor or dynamic load allowance. However, the determination of this parameter is complex due to the different variables that affect the calculation of this value. And if we can obtain a actual or a precise value, it can affect uh, the rating factor of the uh, bridge. So this kind of uh, gives us uh, the main reason to conduct this study. And the main objective of the uh, research was to obtain the experimental impact factor of bridge A7957 analytical and experimentally in order to compare both uh, factors and see what is the difference in the rating factor when both approaches uh, are obtained. So to do that, we use laser vibrometer and accelerometers to obtain the um, dynamic response of the bridge at the end spans and then uh, compare the values. So traditionally, the impact factors has been defined as a function of the span length of the, of the uh, bridge. And here is an example. This is the ASHTO standard equation provided in 1992. As you can see, here's the value of the span length. And in 1994, the ASHTO LRFD bridge design specification modified the name, changed the impact factor definition to dynamic load allowance, and a factor that is independent of the span length was adopted equal to 0 0.33, and is constant, independent of the type of uh, material employed to uh, fabricate the bridge or the member under study. Um, similarly, there are other methods that you can obtain the dynamic load allowance in terms of the natural frequency of the bridge like is in the case of the Ontario Highway Bridge Design Code in, 1990, in 1983, and also the Swiss Code introduced in 1988. Um, in terms of the impact factor obtained experimentally, there are some definitions. Back and Pinjarker in 1989 proposed or reported uh, approximately uh, eight different ways to define the factor. The one we used for this study, based on the instrumentation and the sensors we were using, consisted on obtaining the ratio between the maximum dynamic, the difference between uh, the maximum dynamic and static responses to the maximum static response. The maximum static response can be obtained when a truck test is, uh, when the truck is traveled across the bridge at a, what is called a crawl speed, a speed between five and 10 miles per hour. And then the dynamic uh, component of the response is filtered from, from the response recorder. Some details about Missouri Bridge A7957 uh, are here. This is a bridge built in uh, Lynn, Missouri, very close to uh, Jefferson City, the capital of Missouri. This is a three span continuous bridge that uses precast, precast concrete uh, girders. 
As you can see here, the end span has a length of 100 feet and the middle span has a length of 120 feet. The precast pre-stress concrete girders employ are Nebraska University girders with a height of 53 inches. So in order to obtain the maximum static and dynamic response of the bridge, we place, uh, we use a total station. And here you can see the prisms that were placed at the end spans at locations of the mid-span locations of the, all the girders. So these red points are showing uh, those locations. Similarly, the maximum dynamic response was collected for mid-span of girder line three, only for the first and third span. And finally, six accelerometers were deployed to obtain the accelerations of um, mid-span points, as you can see here on the girders, line three and four on the side, south side of the bridge. This is the total station that was employed. It's a Lake Leica TCA 2003 with an accuracy of plus minus 0 0.1 millimeters. And again, we use this equipment to obtain the maximum static response of these bridges. The accelerometers placed at these mid-span locations were collecting data with a sampling rate of 500 hertz for the different speeds of the trucks traveling. And they were placed close to the prisms located on these locations. And in the case of the remote sensing vibrometer, again, we were collecting the information of these two points. And uh, we collected data at a sampling rate of 120 hertz or 120 points per second. The accuracy of this instrument is plus minus 0.01 millimeters. And we collected these, uh, uh, these points for varying speed of the trucks uh, between 10 and 60 miles per hour. Here you can see the weight, the total weight of the truck, approximately 45 uh, kips. The dimensions about 16 feet between the front and middle axle and 4.5 feet between the middle axles, axle and real axle. So in terms of the static load test, two were conducted to obtain the maximum response at this point here, this point, and the second test for this uh, line. So the truck, the middle axle was placed or was aligned with the center line of span one, and then for test two, that same uh, axle was aligned with this center line. The dynamic load tests were conducted uh, by try, uh, passing this, uh, the test truck at different speed across the bridge in both directions. We started with 10 miles per hour and then increased the speed uh, at a rate of 10 miles per hour up to 60 miles per hour. That was the maximum speed obtained. Here you can see some of the results in the case of the static load test. These uh, axes, you can see uh, on the horizontal axis, the girder numbers, and on the vertical axis, the vertical deflection. The one that we are interested in is uh, the static response of this uh, girder line three, because we wanted to compare the results obtained with a laser vibrometer and this, in this, uh, the total station. We want to see if the order of magnitude was similar. So 1.8 uh, versus 1.9 for the first and low test, even though the spans has the same geometry and the test uh, truck was the same, we have a 5% difference that could be done. Uh, can, uh, the reason could be that the truck was misplaced when it was placed on the, uh, when it was located on the second, on the, during the second test, or also the accuracy of the instrument. However, the results are very close. And, here you can see the acceleration versus time collected for sensor A1. This is the accelerometer located at each span of girder one for the first span. And with this information, we process that data using fast Fourier transform and obtain a fundamental uh, frequency of 3.125 hertz. On this plot, you can see the maximum uh, dynamic and static responses. So this black solid line represent the maximum dynamic response obtained when the truck travel at 60 miles per hour. We obtain a value of 2.08 millimeters. That's the value we plug in in this equation. And the green curve is showing the maximum static or quasi-static response that was filtered from which we, uh, the dynamic component of the response was filtered. 
So 1.77 was the value that was plugged here. So we compared this value to the value obtained using the total station, 1.8 versus 1.77 millimeters, very close, and we assumed the results were uh, accurate. So here in this table, I would like to show you that all the results obtained for the different speed uh, the truck was passed across the bridge. So the first uh, set of data include, uh, for example, the maximum dynamic response, 2.08 for 60 miles per hour. Here, the filter uh, quasi-static uh, response, 1.77. Then the different impact factor or dynamic load allowance computed for the different speeds. And then the dynamic amplification factor that is obtained just by adding uh, one to the, to the impact factor. So a maximum value of 1.17.5 was obtained for this speed. The third, uh, the second set of data include the analytical values provided by the codes. As you can see here, this is the actual lot of the equation. So the dynamic load allowance or impact factor 0.33 versus 0.175. And here we have those, uh, those two results obtained for uh, using the ASHTO uh, standard specification. Two values because we have two spans. The first row here show the impact factor for the span length of 100 feet and here for 120 feet. It's still above this uh, experimental value. In terms of the dynamic load allowance obtained using the Ontario Highway Bridge Design Code, we use this value of, of the fundamental frequency, enter here and obtain an impact factor of 0.4 which is provided here. Here, this plot uh, is showing the different values of the dynamic amplification factor for the different speeds. So for the first four values, 10, 20, 30, and 40, there's no big variation. I would say it's almost uh, zero. And only for values above 40 miles, like in the case of 50 and 60 miles per hour, we see the influence of the impact factor, so 0.15. 1.15 and 1.17.5. So this bridge uh, is uh, low rating using low rate using the ASHTO LRFD bridge equation. So the impact factor that is obtained is 0.33 or that is used, and the dynamic amplification factor used in this equation is 1.33. So if we compare the rating factors using uh, the experimental data. And this analytical data, we can see 13% difference in the rating factor uh, result. So it is, it is uh, quite different. And, and it is very important to have this uh, in consideration, especially for those bridges that are rated below 5 or 4 in that limit. So with this, I would like to present some concluding remarks. So first of all, the first series of the static and dynamic load tests were conducted on this um, bridge to monitor the initial um, in-service dynamic response to the bridge and establish a benchmark. Then the impact factor or dynamic load allowance was obtained experimentally and using uh, these uh, standards. And we compared the values and saw that the analytical values are uh, above these experimental values. And the reason behind this is that impact factors, as has been reported by several researchers, uh, obtained in the field um, implicitly take into account these in situ parameters like unintended support restraints, unintended continuity of the bridge structure, a skew angle contribution of secondary members to the global, to the total or entire uh, stiffness of the structure, and soil structure interaction, which improve the bridge's uh, dynamic response. So. Uh, the factors are not considered uh, by the analytical method proposed by the codes. Uh, more research is necessary in order to quantify the effect, isolate uh, these effects, and obtain more rational uh, low ratings um, in terms of experiment experimental values. With this, I would like to acknowledge the financial support uh, we received to conduct this project by the from the Missouri Department of Transportation and the National University Transportation Center, Missouri s &T. And also I would like to uh, give a special thanks to our staff in our lab 
and all the undergraduate and graduate students uh, who participated in the project or collaborated. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your presentation. One, just one comment about the dynamic amplification. Uh, we've done a lot of work, and you, you presented the ash to LRFD and the standard specs. But we observed that the dynamic impact is proportional to the weight of the vehicle, mm -hmm. and for many other factors. I suspect that in your vehicle is very light, mm -hmm. so of course you'll get very high impact factor. But when you're doing load rating, you target HS20 and above, basically. And mm -hmm. uh, so you have to really have a heavier vehicle than what you had to make that correlation. And it will be much less than 13%. You mm -hmm. probably won't get more than 10%. But the question I have is, in, in your dynamic response, I didn't understand exactly how you filtered it because it doesn't look at the peak there is any dynamic content. So I would just like to answer, to ask you, how, what was your filtering technique? What, what was the cutoff frequency in your, to get the quasi static? What we did here, let me go back. So the original plot is, had this, uh, is not that smooth. It's kind of variating for each point. So what we did is we reduced the frequency to one hertz, below one hertz, 0.8 or one hertz. That's the filter we use and obtain this value. Because it was vibrating like this one you see here, this value. Yeah, but in my, in my experience, is that that probably uh, too low? Probably, I mean, the 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 quasi static should at least fit the. If you take the peak and the valley in each value, mm -hmm. that's your your quasi static. It doesn't fit in your dynamic response. So I wonder why is that? Can you? I don't understand. Yeah, the, the green, the uh -huh. green the filtered one, uh -huh. right? And the other one, the the jagged line is the dynamic, correct? Yes. For the same response. Mm -hmm. If you take the peak and the valley, if you smooth that line. The, the dynamic line, then you should be getting the quasi static. Your oh, green okay. line is outside the window. I don't know if it's a speed, but re that's, uh, yes, remember that this value was obtained for the crawl speed 10 miles per hour. So that's why you see the different. Yeah. In terms of, yeah. Here. Maybe you should plot them in terms of the distance other than time. Then uh -huh. it will be fitting much better. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll, maybe you can comment about the two different methods. Um, the more traditional static load testing using, for example, the, you know, the um, uh, laser prisms versus the vibrometer and some of the advantages there. Well, with the um, data we obtained with this, uh, with the total station, here you can see the dash line. It's just one point, and it takes like one minute to collect the information of one point to take all the three readings of each point. So with this one, we can go up to, for this instrument, the laser vibrometer, we can use a free, uh, sampling rate of up to, I think it's 100,000 hertz. One, one, as long as one you have access, you know, span two had water under it, so that's where it's difficult to shoot vertically with the vibrometer. But I think one of the neat things is you can collect a lot of data just from uh, daily traffic very rapidly. and then do filtering and look at the data from that perspective. That's correct. Any other questions? All right. Thank you, Ellie. Thanks.